Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. I woke up last night at 1.15 in the morning after having gone to bed at my ideal time, which is about 9.30 at night, and I couldn't get back to sleep. And the night before, I woke up at 3 in the morning, couldn't get back to sleep. Two nights before that, I woke up at 2 in the morning, couldn't get back to sleep. And in each case, what I did was I laid in bed and I let the thoughts sort of come, cascade through my mind, felt like basically meditating for hours. And um, this morning, though, um, I put two and two and two and two and two and two together and realized I have hypomania right now. Um, I am not functioning neurotypically. I don't usually wake up in the middle of the night. I usually sleep through the night, almost always, uh, and whew, super grateful for that. Um, I am blessed with good sleep, good circadian rhythm, and I work hard to protect my circadian rhythm, but um, super unusual for me. And I started to notice other things, like um, yesterday, which was my 26th um, clean and sober anniversary date. I haven't had a drink or a drug for 26 years. Thank you, God. Um, I was out to dinner with some recovery friends and there was a band of African drummers drumming um, on the Erie Canal. And it was so just so beautiful, the atmosphere. And um, at the end, I went over and gave them, you know, a tip, like some money in their box. And um, normally I would like, be really generous. But in this case, I gave every dollar I had in my wallet, including it was like a lot of money I'd taken out for a, a chiropractic appointment that I have today and um, just gave it all. And I'd gone to the bank to get money for the chiropractor. So that wasn't so wise. And um, yeah, impulsivity, uh, spending, shopping. I'm not a shopper. I'm not a spender. Um, it's a sign of mania, hypomania. And um, a couple of days ago, a, sh a store was going out of business and my heart broke for it because it's shutting down due to COVID. And I found myself buying a bunch of things that I was, um, it was not typical behavior for me. And um, so, you know, I'll get a formal diagnosis, but um, I'm a psychology professor. I've taught this stuff for a lot of years. I have hypomania. Pretty sure. Checked, you know, good old Google just to be sure the symptoms, which I knew. And yeah, totally. I had like eight out of 11 symptoms when, you know, you only need a half of that or whatever to, to have it. So, um, and I was clinically depressed this past winter. I never told you that in a vlog, but, um, I had clinical depression this past winter for the first time in 17 years. Um, I tell often the story of how I changed my eating and I got off all my antidepressants and my depression went away and yay, it was a miracle. And um, yeah, I have an amends to make. If you have mental illness and you're in the Bright Line Eating community, I apologize to you. I have been wrong to tell my story of mental illness with such a centering of the neurotypical experience and the like prioritization of that narrative, right? Like I came into bright line eating or I stopped eating sugar and flour, got my food straight, got off my medication and I haven't had any depression since. That is true, but it also um, pushes into the shadows um, the very real experiences of people for whom that does not happen, which is a lot of people who have mental illness, come into bright line eating, eating right will help a lot, but still find that they need their medication or their mental illness is not gone. And I am so sorry I have not been giving voice to your experience. It's humbling and scary to have symptoms of mental illness back in my life. And it's so interesting as Bright Line Eating is doing so much diversity, equity, and inclusion work right now to have my eyes opened to yet another perspective, yet another way that um, 
more marginalized perspectives, more marginalized voices haven't been heard here or as presenced here in our space. And so in this vlog today, I just want to give voice to how hard it is to have mental illness. I'm thinking of a dear, dear friend of mine who has been in food recovery for a long time and has profound mental illness, really is brilliant and has brought her gifts to the world in so many ways. And I've watched her work so hard to craft an identity around not taking medication and rejecting the um, harm that medication has done to her and then go down a path with no medication and realize she had to switch paths and then work to reshape her identity as someone who needs medication and watching her grieve the loss of the narrative of I can do this myself with enough kale and exercise and sunshine. And um, thanks to my uh, dear friend Amber for that phrase. I thought I was talking about that, this with her before I shot this vlog. And she said, I know, because she has, you know, she was like, I know, it's just you feel like, you know, just with enough kale and exercise and sunshine, I should be able to fix this, you know, like if I just try harder. And um, the medication issue is so nuanced, right? And I um, feel like I have not brought the nuance to this discussion. I have friends who, um, and I myself, you know, gosh, you know, just believing so hard, uh, so deeply in the lifestyle will do it, um, like bias against medication. And it is true, I believe, that many psychiatric medications are overprescribed or prescribed, um, I want to say incautiously, I don't know if that's a word, without enough caution. Um, and the brain is an organ in the body and it is so impacted by diet, exercise, sunlight, all these different factors. And I have a couple friends, lifelong friends, for whom my heart breaks because they won't take medication. And one of them isn't even functional, like doesn't doesn't even support himself, like just lives in someone else's house and doesn't, he's so brilliant and so kind and so wise. And he just lives with low grade depression, but crippling enough that he isn't a full manifestation, I believe. That's just my, just my sense, having known him for whatever it is, 25 years or something. I have, I, my heart breaks for some of my friends who won't take medication. And I just feel like, oh gosh, with just a little something, something just to get you over the edge so that you're not crushed by that boulder every day. And then there are other times where I feel like, oh my gosh, that medication is so hard, the symptoms that it causes and stuff. I have a lot of friends in my life for whom medication is their salvation. It, it really, salvation's a loaded word, but you know, it's like, it's what helps them function on a daily basis. And they can uh, bring it because they have found the right support in the form of the right medication to just balance them out enough so that they can really show up. And it is exactly what they need and they swear by it. And um, a couple of those have gone through the cycle of trying to give it up and watching watching their brain just like drift into um, unworkable territory, have it get really bad. And nope, you know, the medication, maybe a smaller dose this time, maybe the full dose, maybe a bigger dose to get back on track. I love you if you're on medication. I love you if you're not. I love you if you're um, tortured by these questions. I love you if you have peace around it with, without mental illness, neurotypical, neurostruggling. I want your voice heard here in Bright Line Eating and I want you to feel safe here in Bright Line Eating. And you know what I can reflect having struggled more with mental illness in the last six months than I have in 18 years is that, you know, it's really funny how shockingly hard I found it to spot it. Like, like quite curious, I gotta say. 
I mean, I don't want to scare you, but this winter, I had to get to the point where I spent all day one day thinking about dying. All day. Before I realized I was depressed. Not having enough energy to function didn't do it. I was functioning. That was, I guess, why I didn't really notice. Because in the past, I would sleep 17 hours a day when I was depressed. But I'm not eating sugar and flour anymore. Uh, my lines have been clean for almost a year now. Um, like really clean, not a break in almost a year. So it was not food related. This was not, and this was before COVID. Um, this was before COVID. So the depression. And people were saying that they were worried about me. Everything felt like a struggle. Things didn't feel like they had meaning, but it wasn't until I thought about dying. I, I wasn't thinking about killing myself. I was kind of pondering the notion, but I, I had a voice that was like, you have three kids, you are not going to do that. But I couldn't for the life of me make anything I was looking at in this world mean anything. It just didn't mean anything. I was just looking around, just going, and I would kind of have a voice still, a very logical, calm voice saying, your life actually means a lot, Susan. <laughs> Your life actually, there are people who would tell you your life means a lot. And then I would have another voice say, not really though. And that's what it took. I, the, the only thing I had that could help me see that I had depression was the benchmark, the external benchmark of the awareness that in all of the years of severe clinical depression that I used to have, I never once thought about death. And I thought, this must be bad if I'm having this thought. It must be just objectively speaking. Why am I now thinking about death? That's weird. So I got help. And now the objective benchmark of, okay, I just woke up, it's 1.15 in the morning. That doesn't usually happen. Okay, I just woke up, it's two in the morning. That doesn't usually happen. Okay, I just gave all my cash that I actually needed to this band. That, that's not something I would normally do those external benchmarks, but um, the racing thoughts, the having a hard time stopping talking, the um, grandiosity, the wild ideas, the impulsivity, like that's kind of how I roll anyway. So it's kind of, it was, yeah, it was sort of hard to notice, honestly, hard to notice. That is one of the things of hypomania is that your friends notice it before you do. Anyway. Mental illness is hard. You know, it's like just one more thing in a life that's already pretty hard, especially right now. You know, COVID time, this COVID thing, it's a trauma that's happening to all of us. It's a collective trauma and it's an individual trauma played out in so many different ways in so many different homes. And David and I have started going to marriage therapy and we have an excellent counselor and um, we had our first session with her and she said something really poignant that I won't forget. David said something about, well, yeah, it's hard times right now. And she said, yeah, don't underestimate that. She said, I'm seeing it in my office all day these days. Even the people who had the story, uh, COVID is turning out to be great for me because it's a respite and it's benefiting me in certain ways. Even those people, she said, they're in my office. They're impacted. They're impacted. I think the bottom line that I want to bring to this conversation is love, compassion for myself, for you. If you have any form of mental illness, I just want you to know how much I am standing with you, walking with you, loving you, respecting you in your choices and your process, not judging what you do or don't do, hoping you will advocate for yourself, and give yourself the love and the space that you need, the support that you need. I am exceedingly blessed with the support that I have in my life, and I need more. I need more. I sent two emails today. I have, I could tell you all the support that I have. It's pretty ridiculous. I have a lot of support in my life. I need it to do what I do. And I sent two emails today looking for a face-to-face -face therapist that I can see once a week in my area. If I have to sit 10 feet apart and wear a mask, cool in the gang. But I need someone to talk to every week about this stuff and get some support, more support.
I apologize for it taking this long to shoot this vlog. We are all welcome here. And this is to the absolute best of our collective ability, my ability, please your ability to a judgment free zone. I love you. That's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.